we're going to speak about this mass balance exercise in combustion. We're talking about combustion, remember it's fuel and oxidant, and we will be talking about specifically about this combustion of ethane. And ethane is burned with 50% excess air, that's good. The percentage conversion of the ethane is 90%. So look at this, not even having 50% of excess air completes the combustion. So we're going to have 90% com complete combustion and 10% incomplete combustion. We have 25% uh, of CO2, okay, and CO2. The balance reacts to form CO2, nice. And what else? Calculate the molar composition of the stack gas on dry basis and water. Dry stack. The water to this dry gas ratio. This is simply water and gas. Now, we have the feed, it's ethane. And we have air, which is 21% O2, 79% nitrate. We have this 90% conversion, and they tell you that from this 90%, 25% is CO and 75% is CO2. So, let's choose a basis. 100 mol of feed. Let's balance equations. These are the equations we're going to use. And, okay, let's continue. We need to calculate the amount of excess air. So we need to calculate the air required by the reactants, which is by definition. Okay, let me explain you this. We will use 100% by definition. Because you will say, okay, how much moles I need? Actually, let's do it. How much moles of C2H6 are going to react to C2H with? Only CO, this is CO, and this is CO2. This is the amount of oxygen required for the CO section, which is only 25 moles, and the 75 moles is, I need this amount for, yeah, good, CO2, nice. But by definition, the excess air is given in 100% conversion. So, what happens? is that we don't we don't need to add up these moles it's actually easier we just go 100 moles of c2h6 are combusted are in combustion of seven half which is the 100 percent combustion one times 100 and you will see that you are feeding up 350 moles of oxygen let's change that to air and see how much air we are feeding and it's 350 moles of o2 divided by 21 mole you do this relationship, they go out, and you find that you have this number here. Now, since it's 50%, it's going to be a multiplication of 1.5 times the error required. And the error required is this amount times 1.5. You will find out that you need 2,500 mol of error. So we have error right now. Let's go check out a mass balancing reactor to see how much are we producing of each. So 100 mol will react, 90% of it will react. So this 90% turns to 90 and goes out. And you know that 1 minus 0.9 will not react. This is this 10% mol of ethane, don't react. So we're going to have this in the outlet. Now from this 90%, I know that 25% goes as CO, so I just need to multiply 90 times 0.25 and I will get the amount that goes in the CO reaction. And the same thing with the amount of CO2, it's only 90 times 0.75 will give me the amount of ethane that goes to the CO2 fraction. So by stoichiometry, now we know one mole of ethane when combustion completing will give me 7 half of oxygen, 2 moles of CO2 and 3 moles of H2O. And since I know it's 77.5, I just need to multiply this, multiply this, and multiply this, and with this, 2 times 75, 7, no, 67, 3 times 67 will give me around this. So just multiply all these here by 
67.5 and you get all the com let's say all the CO2 fraction you got water you got how much methane you got how much oxygen and we will do exactly the same thing for the conversion or the production of mono carbon monoxide which is one mole of ethylene no, ethane times 22.5 which is this number right here so it goes 25 and you know this number times 22 and this number times 22 and this number by 22 now you get the composition and we will actually just add stuff I made this table the inlet minus consumption mass plus production equals outlet so inlet is 100 and this is this comes from the air in excess composition consumption yes we know 90 percent consumes so you will have left only 10 of ethane oxygen you know we have consumption yes actually we add from these mass balance I'm going to add this and this guy so I have it here it's 282 not production of oxygen only consumption and I find out the outlet because I know the inlet minus the outlet of course must be something going out nitrogen just goes out there's no inlet of these guys these products but we do have production let's go back we have this 45 and the CO2 oh sorry guys CO2 is here CO2 is 135 and finally take care water is being produced in both directions that's why I'm adding both I have it here 200 of water and 67 of water which gives you something near this number now we we know the outlet composition let's just do the composition of stack gas we add everything up and we will find the amount of moles which either is A, 2,666, including water, and if we do it dry, we just need to take out water, which is 270, and you get this number. Why am I, I am doing this? Because I'm going to calculate the wet one, the wet composition, and the dry composition. Let this value be A, and let this value be B. We just need to put all these 10, all, all the moles, total moles, we found in here this we're going to use all this and we are going to divide by a dividing by a we get this nice now we got we got the wet one let's go for the dry one we are here we do exactly the same numbers but we divide by this letter b this number which is this and you should see that there's a slightly difference between the all of these Actually, we cannot calculate this guy for this, that's why we have a line. But compare, for example, you have more here, which makes sense because we're taking out water. And yeah, that's composition. Now, what? This is like I just asking you what if you forget the nitrogen in the composition? The addition of nitrogen is 422, so we're going to take out this because nitrogen is a lot, 1000, almost 2000 so let's take out 2000 to this, you will find out this and with the same numbers you will find out that if you miss nitrogen you will be calculating this composition which is a lot different for example O2 composition is almost 55% mole and in this case it's only 8% so it is a huge difference so don't forget ever to add nitrogen. Finally, the ratio gas between stack gas is gas, we know it. It's actually this the addition is I think this letter A we said. And the stack gas is dry one. Which actually is uh, A A divided by B. Just remembering this is A and this is B. And we calculate this. Good. Uh, the book, I think they have another answer which doesn't make sense. If you have any recommendation or problem, or you actually got this answer rather than mine, you can please check my mail chemical. 
engineering dot guy the, uh, at gmail and send me how you do it because I think they are wrong. I don't know if I read it like incorrectly or so, but I think this is the answer. And if you need more exercise, go to the problem section because we are done with this section. And I will be concluding this section in the next video. So thank you guys and keep watching. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.